Welcome back to the show. This is GH Today here on GH1 Television. Thank you very much for staying tuned. We've got another conversation coming up, and I told you earlier that we'll be speaking to the Electoral Commission. Uh, one of the commissioners uh, from the Electoral Commission is here in the studio. Uh, I'm pretty sure you already know his name, and we'll be talking about the upcoming elections. Uh, you know, we've got just a few days more to the December 7 election, and of course, uh, the Electoral Commission is the one playing that crucial role of ensuring that everything is intact, everything is set, everything is nice, all parties are satisfied as we're going into the 2024 uh, general elections. Uh, Dr. Bosman Asari is my guest here in the studio on Hard Talk this morning. Doc, good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah, it's been. A, I've not been here. I don't think I've been in the studio before. No, you've not come uh, to the studio before. We always a, talk to you on phone. A very, a very beautiful studio. Yeah. <laughs> and we're happy that you've joined us in the studio today. Thank you. Thank how you are you know. doing? Oh, by God's grace, I'm doing very, very well. Mm. And how is the Electoral Commission doing? I think we, we, are, we are doing so great and we are so enthusiastic, highly motivated mm. for the 2024 elections. Mm. Highly motivated? Highly motivated. Where, where's the motivation coming oh, from? Oh, because we, we, we've doubled down on all the good things we have to do as an institution looking at what we did in 2020 and what we've done now. So we are fully persuaded, fully convinced that Ghana is going to have another successful general election come December 7, 2024. Mm. And how are you handling all the pressure, you know, that is coming uh, with this election? Because there have been issues at every given time. One political party is raising an issue. Another political party is raising an issue. All kinds of accusing fingers are being pointed at the electoral commission and all of that, 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 that must be a lot of pressure. Well, I think How for, are you for us, that? We, we, don't, we, do, we don't see that as a lot of pressure. We don't look at it from that angle because we know what is right and that is what we are doing. And at times we believe that maybe some people don't understand the processes very well mm -hmm. or they rush into conclusions. Mm -hmm. That's why they do make some of these allegations against us. But if you have noticed over the past six months, at the time these allegations have surfaced, the EC has always been able to respond to it in a manner that was, has always satisfied the good people of our country. So we believe that the nature of our democracy is such that uh, this is an adversarial political system. So mm. you have uh, parties that are two parties that are so dominant. So uh, one of the likely effects of having an adversarial system is that we are going to be having the parties going at each other. However, they can even extend it beyond each other to that of the Electoral Commission. Mm -hmm. And we acknowledge that. But for us, what we have to do is that make sure all your processes are transparent. Make sure that all the processes are inclusive. They are participatory. Once we can do that and have all the parties on board, those who even criticize, when they look back, they realize that, oh, the EC did a right thing. And we, as an institution, we have a reputation uh, to protect. You talk about elections in Africa, the quality of elections, Ghana is one of the best mm. in this business. So we know that we have to always maintain the standard. If we cannot better it, we need to maintain. And in this election, you will see that it will go down as one of the best in our history. Well, why do you say it will go down as one of our best, one of the best in our history? No, what has the EC done or what have you put in place that makes you so confident saying this? You know, in 2020, we, we, we did the elections under COVID. Yes. And look what we went through. We used almost about six months mm -hmm. to compile the voters register. And within that same six months, we did exhibition, we did trans, we did a whole lot of things, and we had the elections. If you remember, regist uh, registration started since June 30th or so, mm -hmm. and we had the elections on December 7th, and yeah. this year we've had enough time. And apart from that, one of the things we've done to strengthen our system has to do with employment of coalition officers at all the three levels of the uh, coalition, at the constituency level, at the regional level, especially in national. So when you look at it from that perspective, we've doubled down on all the good measures we, we did in, or we adopted in 2020. And we believe that in, in this good environment, unlike in 2020 mm -hmm. when we had COVID yeah. and a lot of publicity about our processes have been done, we think that we'll go down as this elections will go down as one of the 
best, the parties, the explanation, the people of Ghana understand. You know, recently there were these allegations that, oh, the register had issues, etc. Yes. We came out publicly. The people got to know that, indeed, what always the EC has always been saying is right. So we believe that with all this and getting these elections, it will go a long way to be one of the best. Is the EC in bed with the ruling government? Oh, I think that anyone who understands our processes, if you understand our processes, you realize that anyone who, who, who jumps to that conclusion or jumps to that bad wagon is just being very mischievous or just pretending he or she doesn't understand the process. But when you look at the processes, when we are registering, mm -hmm. we do it with the parties. The parties are allowed agents at all the registration centers. When we finish the registration, the data from the registration is shared. We have what we call end of day, start of day report and end of day report at each registration center. Mm -hmm. So before we start, the parties know how many people are, are, have been registered the day before. And when we end that day, we know. We know, we know the numbers. We give those same details to the parties. Everything we are doing, we do with the political parties. So anyone who, who makes that conclusion or makes that assertion that, oh, the EC is in bed with the government, then clearly the person has just uh, decided not to understand the process. Because when you engage your media friends and you, the media, you look at all the processes the EC deploys. Currently, uh, printing of ballots, has an, a chunk has been completed and some few are ongoing. You ask the political parties, mm -hmm. at the printing houses, almost all the print, not almost all the printing houses, the parties have at least two agents there mm -hmm. who, are, who are working there. Mm -hmm. When we are so transporting Some of the parties complained that previously with the printing of the ballots, for example, there were you know, more than two agents. You know, there are about three or four agents that were allowed to monitor every single process. And the EC has decided that just two agents will be allowed. And that is not nearly enough to be able to monitor the process properly to see if anything on tour is being when, done. When the EC says two agents, what we actually mean is that at each point in time, mm -hmm. two agents must be in, in the printing house right. monitoring the process. Mm -hmm. But you can also have two or four on standby. In case these people leave the printing houses, then, then the these people come. can take over. Don't forget that the party we are working with, uh, 13, now we have 12 uh, political, 12 political parties, including independent candidates. So the independent candidates are four. The political, those who representing political parties as candidates mm -hmm. are eight. Mm -hmm. So if you have two from each political party, that alone is 24. Apart from that, we are going to have security personnel mm -hmm. from the NIB and other sec Ghana police service and other security agencies. And the EC is also supposed to have about eight officials whose job is to check and make sure that all the things or all the printing has been done uh, properly. So that's what we do. And the parties can testify that everything we do, we do it in tandem with them. Recently, the NDC was not happy that the EC didn't provide them with uh, summary statistics. You know, before the register was handed over, there was a pen drive that you gave to them. They returned the pen drive. They were demanding for the statistics. And um, Madam Jean Mensah was very emphatic that the EC is not obliged to give those statistics. What you're obliged to do is to give a certified register, and that is what you are provided. It's something that they were not very happy, very happy about, that the EC cannot say that you are not obliged to give them those statistics. Of course, later on, the statistics were provided, but they were looking for you know, further particulars. What is it with that, you know, that you know, makes one party say that, no, the Electoral Commission must provide that statistics, and the EC says that, well, we are not obliged to. Even though we'll give it to you, we are not obliged to. You know, our, our processes are guided by laws. Apart from that, the EC, in certain things, we have some discretion as an institution which uh, we, we use it in a manner that will advance the course of the country's democracy. You look at the CI, the CI on, on registration, CI 91, as amended by uh, CI 126. Regulation 27.4 is very clear. The EC must give the certified register yes. to political parties. Mm -hmm. And the certified register contains everything. You have the, the picture nationally. So you know what uh, the number of registered voters in each of the uh, 16 regions. You know the number of registered voters in each of the 276 constituencies. Apart from that, you know the registered voters in each of the 40,648 polling stations. So if the EC has given this to you, 
the onus is on the party to go and open the document and check all this. Giving of summaries is usually even done for the people of our country. Not So we don't owe that responsibility mm. to the political parties. Unless you are a party and you are saying that the certified register the EC has given to you, you don't want to even open it and check and be sure that the figures are right. So what the EC did was right. But, you know, uh, later on we, we still gave it. And we didn't give it because we owe that responsibility to political parties. We did it largely because we owe that to the people of this mm. country. Would you say there is some animosity between the EC and the NDC? You know, given the recent history, they deciding to leave IPAC, returning to IPAC, and there's always, you know, one issue or another that the NDC has, you know, with how the EC conducts its activities. No, I think I, if you ask me candidly, I would say there is no animosity. I think it's just politics as usual. Because the EC has been conducting NDC internal elections for them. They had their national executive elections, constituency executive elections, regional executive elections. All these things were done for them. The EC had that obligation in the constitution to do that for them, and it was done. And we also did their flag bearer election, as well as uh, uh, the members of parliament, their primary elections, which is not a constitutional mandate of the EC, mm -hmm. but the EC did it for them. So I think that at times the parties do certain things you may not understand, but in terms of animosity, I don't think there is mm. anything like that. I mean, for example, they were not very happy with the disqualification of uh, Joanna Jan Kujo, um, and they felt that with that particular you know, instance, it was a clear indication that the EC didn't want a candidate who was potentially going to win the election for the NDC to contest you know, in that, uh, in, in that constituency. No, I know, I know for that issue in Memphis Central, if yes. you, even you engage uh, NDC lawyers and those who understand the legal process, I'm not a lawyer, yes. those who understand the legal process, they will tell you that they, maybe probably the party made a mistake. Th there was an injunction. Mm. If the, you have been injuncted not to uh, present yourself as a candidate, as a candidate or as a party, you, your job was to make sure that that injunction was removed. So the EC said that once this particular candidate has been injuncted, we cannot recognize that person as such. You know, the injunction, the EC was part of that particular process. Mm -hmm. Those who filed the injunction, they, they added the EC onto it. So if we had accepted that can, uh, person as a candidate for the parliamentary election at that particular time, it would mean the EC will be going against the laws of our country. And we have made it very clear. A, a judge of the high court has ruled that a person should not be on the ballot. A person cannot present him or herself as a candidate. And the EC going against that, that will amount to the EC uh, being in contempt, of course. So we, I believe we did the right thing. And with the processes that has transpired so mm -hmm. far, I know the NDC will, will confess to you mm -hmm. that what the EC did was right. Is she back on the ballot now? No, you know based on the, the, the EC's position has always been that she was disqualified because yes. of the injunction. Mm -hmm. So once the injunction has been removed, the yes. uh, commission will take the necessary action. Mm. So will she be put back on the no. ballot? No. Once, the injunction, once, once the injunction has been removed, mm -hmm. the road has been paved for her to be on the ballot. Mm. So she will be on the ballot. No, that's why I said once the injunction has been removed, right? <laughs> the injunction is no longer... Okay. Enforce. All right. So uh, recently also, we, we understand the EC destroyed some ballot papers because there were some, some errors. So some ballot papers have been shredded and burned. What, what, what happened? No, what happened? One, one of our printing houses, you know, the, when, when they are doing the printing, they do print the ballots. Then they, later on, they will add the serial numbers. Mm -hmm. And those serial numbers in all the printing houses, they are automatically generated. And in this particular printing house, they had the problem with the, the machine that would generate the serial numbers. So they were doing that manually for the two regions. Right. And the process was going on very well. So we thought they would be able to survey the situation to ensure that it will match up with the automatic generation. But along the line, our team noticed that there were still some gaps. And the commission took the decision that to enhance and to ensure ballot integrity. Mm -hmm. Why not we give that particular printing to another uh, printing house? So we decided, okay, let's give that particular job, which had to do with the Ahafu region presidential parliamentary and the voter region presidential parliamentary. So the commission took the decision to give 
uh, the voter region to us commercials limited, right. then they have a region to book press. Mm -hmm. And when we did that, you know, the plates they used in the printing, we decided to destroy them in the presence of the agents of the political parties, as well as personnel from the Ghana Police Service and the National Intelligence Bureau mm -hmm. and other security agencies. Mm -hmm. So as we speak now, those plates that were used for the printing of the Ahafo presidential parliamentary voter region presidential parliamentary they have been destroyed and subsequently we'll go ahead to also destroy the ballot papers that were printed from uh, this printing house right but um the ndc for example say that as far back as november 2 they drew the commission's attention to some of these uh, uh, discrepancies but i mean it's now that the ec is, is acting on is this is that is that accurate Oh, no, no. Because if, you, you, you go on the Facebook page of Dr. Mane Buama as far back as 2nd November and he has posted, you know, about, about, about this day. You know, NDC has not informed us formally or informally that they've had challenges with uh, any of our printing houses. What we do is that the job we do, we have these printing houses who have been with us. For those who are printing now, I think uh, the least number of years will be about since 98 almost about 26 years. We've been working together with them. But what we've noticed is that uh, for the parties, the least thing they will try to make uh, some jump to, uh, to some conclusions on it. So officially, this was something which was identified by the Electoral Commission. And as we said, we thought that they could be able to survey the situation. And when we noticed that it's going to affect uh, the integrity of the ballot. The commission took the decision. Mm. Let's give it to these two other printers who have demonstrated a lot of competence in the printing of the parliamentary and the presidential ballots. Mm. So, as it stands now, there is no problem in that regard, and the EC is taking the necessary steps. Well, there, to, there, there is no problem, deal. and you know, we had a meeting with the parties, I think, on Friday, and we explained to them why we have taken this particular decision. And from the meeting, you could see that all the parties were very, very satisfied. The, the EC's main concern is to ensure the integrity of the elections. Mm. And whatever is proper, whatever is necessary, whatever is needful to be done to ensure the integrity of the process, the EC is going to do that. We care about the country's democracy. We believe that elections are so important. So everything the EC must do to ensure the integrity of the process, to ensure that all the parties are very, very much satisfied with the process. That is what we are going to do. And it's one of the reasons why we took that decision that to ensure ballot integrity, mm -hmm. let's engage other printing houses to do this work for us. Mm. Right, so um, how do you, you know, get people out there who may have a certain perception uh, about, you know, the posturing of the EC towards this election, you know, people who may have, uh, who may be sympathetic towards one political party or another may have a certain problem towards the posturing, seemingly, of the Electoral Commission. How do you convince those people out there that, look, the EC cannot do anything untoward. Our job is to conduct a free and fair elections, and that is exactly what we are doing if you look at the processes. So for someone watching who may have that perception, no, what do you tell such a person? No, I think that uh, we, we, we think that people must understand our processes. B people must build capacity in our processes. People must be educated well on our processes. There is this uh, uh, research project known as the Electoral Integrity Project, right. which they survey all elections around the world. Mm -hmm. And when it talks about the quality of elections, in Africa and even around the world, Ghana is one of the global leaders. In the whole of Africa, we rank, we were given 70% for 2024, based mm -hmm. on their report in 2024. And in Africa, we rank number five. Uh, I think there, there are a few countries that are ahead of us. And the main country, I would say, that is also doing so well has to do with South Africa. Apart from South Africa, you are talking about uh, the Gambia and I think Lesotho. These are the countries like ahead of Ghana. So when you look at this, this is a research-based, a very, very rigorous scientific process. Apart from that, in 2020, when we did the elections, almost all the observers that came, all of them, they endorsed and they gave us massive approval rating based on what we did in 2020. So I tell people that look at what the reports on the work of the Electoral Commission. We know the parties are such that they want to advance a course to benefit them as a political party. They will do that. But look at our processes. Everything we do is guided by 
either the constitution or the CIs. And in this election, for example, the main CI, which is very, very important, has to do with CI 127, which is on the elections proper. So everything we do is guided by law. So I think that regardless of the political party you support, mm -hmm. make sure that you, you educate yourself very well as far as the EC's activities are concerned. Because once you get to know the activities very well, you get to know the processes very well, you realize that all these things the parties are saying, mm -hmm. they are completely the opposite of reality. For example, recently when we did our IPAC, we started going public with our IPAC. You realize there are many people say, ah, so this thing is like this and this is the picture we were getting. Mm. Even some in the international community, they, they, they believed in certain things, but after the public IPAC, nationally televised IPAC, you realize that people got to understand that, hey, we have to be, be very careful. We have to educate ourselves very well in the process. Because when you talk about the organization of elections, as I said, Ghana is one of the best. And we believe that this is something we want to continue. We want to build on that. We want to become even the best as far as the world is concerned. Mm. Right. So um, recently, uh, unfortunately, um, one of the uh, presidential candidates on the ballot, Madam Ikadonko, um, passed. You know, he, she, he, she passed on. How much of a challenge did that present, you know, to the EC? In, 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 in dealing with it, you know, people are now wondering what is going to happen. Is there going to be reballoting and all of that? But you came to a certain conclusion that she's still going to stay. How, how much of a challenge did that no, it, situation it, present to the East? I think it, it, it was a challenge. I wouldn't say a very big one, mm. but it was a challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, the framers of our constitution did not anticipate that a time will come when a presidential candidate will pass on. Mm. When you look at the constitution very well, yeah. they didn't anticipate. So all the provisions in the constitution and the CI, you realize that they, they are more applicable to the parliamentary uh, candidates. Yeah. So we looked at the constitution and we also looked at our, at our CIs and noticed that I think, uh, in the constitution, article 40, clause 4, it paints a picture of in the event a candidate dies, yes. you give about, the commission will give about 10 days for a replacement. And you realize that it was more applicable to, to the parliamentary. With the side. parliamentary. But the commission yeah. looked at it and uh, we were advised by our lawyers that we could still use that. Mm -hmm. So the commission took the decision that in the interest of fairness to still advance the frontiers of our democracy, why not give uh, the Ghana Freedom Party an, an opportunity mm -hmm. within the same 10 days to present another candidate, which we did. Unfortunately, that candidate, after filing the, the nomination, yeah. did not succeed. So we had to convey an emergency meeting with the political parties and the independent candidates contesting the elections. Their, their representatives came. And in that particular meeting, we told them that the candidate of the GFP did not succeed. But at the time the, uh, Madame Mekriadonko passed on, mm -hmm. we had printed over 90% of the presidential ballot. Yeah. So we explained it to the parties that in the interest of time, because time, time was not on our side, mm -hmm. you had already printed about nine, over 90 percent. Why not to maintain the ballots as it was mm -hmm. so that we'll continue with the process? And we know Madame McCreadonko is no longer one of the candidates. So the commission will go out there to do the public education that there are 12 candidates. Unfortunately, on the ballot, they are 13, mm -hmm. but one of them is not a candidate. Once you vote for that particular person, your, your ballot will not count. It will be annulled. So we had that discussion with the parties, and generally there was broad acceptance, and we had to move on with that. Was there any contemplation at any given time for there to be perhaps a reballoting? No, the commission, Did it ever come up? the commission never considered that. Mm. The commission thought that having printed over 90%, and when you look at the CI, one of the regulations states that in the event there is an election yeah. and one of the candidates on the eve of the elections, after the ballots have been printed, yeah. and one of the candidates decide that, decides that he or she is opting out of the elections, the CI says that that person's uh, details will still be on the ballot, although the person has opted out. So yeah. we thought that uh, the law also makes room for that. Mm. So what is the advice to people when they go to the ballot, as far as that particular, as far as the ballot sheet is concerned, the presidential ballot sheet is concerned? Madame Ikea, Donko's name will be there. Yes. 
it will not be it will not be blacked out or anything like that. Yeah, then it they, will it be will, there. It will be there as, as, as the third on the ballot. Mm. But what we are saying is that she is no longer a candidate for the presidential election. Mm -hmm. She is no longer a candidate. So when you go, there are twelve candidates. Uh, number one, number two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I believe that if you really love Madame Ekwiadonko, this is not the time to show the love. The time to show the love when the funeral and all the other uh, activities uh, for her departure are being done, make sure that you, you go there and support the family. Mm. But this time, she is not one of the candidates for the 2024 presidential election. So when you go there and you are going to vote at your polling station, there are 12 candidates. Ensure that you select mm. one of them. So if you vote for Madame Ikiadonko, it means your, your vote your, is... Your vote will not be counted. It's, it's, it will be annulled. Mm. To, become, to turn out to become a rejected mm. ballot. You know, people are wondering how she got onto the ballot sheet in the first place. People have asked questions. Ah, how was Madame Ikiadonko able to get onto the ballot sheet? And people like Bernard Mona and, you know, other candidates were, were disqualified. No, I think that people, people must build capacity in our processes very well. The, the laws are very clear that to qualify as a candidate for president, the main requirement is that you must be a Ghanaian. And after being a Ghanaian, you must be a registered voter. You must be at least 40 years. And we know Madame Mekwiadonko, uh, uh, before, before her demise, she was more than 40 years old. So she met the requirement. Mm -hmm. And the commission has certain rules to follow. You must fill some forms. And in the, fill, in the filling of the forms, you must provide certain documentation, like your task clearance. You must have two persons in each of the, uh, or each of the administrative districts of the country endorsing you. So regardless of your level of education, mm -hmm. you can engage people to go and do that work for you. Mm -hmm. The commission hasn't specified that you must be the one doing the... The commission says that you must fill the nomination forms and bring it to us. So regardless of your level of education, if you don't do it well, the commission will disqualify you. And all those who were disqualified, there were problems with their forms. So if somebody says, why did she get onto the ballot the person doesn't understand our processes. There were about 24 people who filed. Mm -hmm. And out of the 24, 13 were deemed to have uh, satisfied mm -hmm. the requirements. All the others were disqualified. They didn't meet the requirements. So if anyone stands somewhere and says, oh, why did Mr. Mona, why did this person didn't qualify yeah. because of their level of, the person doesn't understand our processes. Mm. I mean, some of them are of the opinion that if you found any discrepancies with signatures or anything like that, you would afford them the opportunity to correct those mistakes rather than just outrightly disqualifying we didn't we didn't outrightly disqualify them Some, there are certain mistakes when you make we will give you the chance to correct them but if those if those are uh, are, are very criminal in nature we don't give you the chance to correct that that one the commission will disqualify you so all those who are disqualified they were given the opportunity to correct the ones that were deemed to to be correctable mm. apart from that the others if they were uh, criminal in nature, the commission will not give you that opportunity. Mm. So there was no favoritism That's whatsoever. why the law allows Just that. The oh, as for favoritism, the point is that we have four independent candidates. Yes. I know Mr. Chiramatin, Ms. Yes. Nana Kwan I think there's one Mr. Chumberima. And then uh, Kofi uh, Kranti. Yeah. No, Mr. Kranti was disqualified in 2020. Mm. And he went back to the drawing board and did everything right. So all those who qualified they went through the process, they did everything right. Mm. Right. Now, um, with the upcoming elections, one of the most arguably most famous quotes, you know, is that elections are won at the polling stations. What does that mean? Well, what, what it actually means is that the, the basis of the declaration of the presidential election, the basis of the declaration of the parliamentary election they all come from the polling station. Well, you know, the parliamentary election, the, uh, for the parliamentary elections, for each constituency, the coalition center, the constituency, is where everything will be terminated mm -hmm. at. Mm -hmm. So all the, so let's take a constituency like Kaswa. The district is Aoutu Senya East. Mm -hmm. Aoutu Senya East has over 300 polling stations. The results of, from all the polling stations are what we are going to be putting together. Results from all the polling states, we put them together. Then we declare the winner of the parliamentary 
election mm -hmm. in Awutu Senya in Kasua. Mm -hmm. You go to a Futu Winiba, we do the same. So when we say the elections are won over there, what it actually means is that the exact numbers you get at each police station. That's what we are going to put together. And for the presidential, the whole of Ghana is one constituency. But we've divided the country into polling stations, into constituencies in that manner. Mm -hmm. So what we are going to do come December 7th is that all the results from the 40,648 polling stations mm -hmm. plus the uh, 328 or so special voting centers, those are the results from the polling station we are going to put together. So if you are a party or an institution that can put together all the police station results from all the 40,900 and something, the, the uh, ones for December 7th and the special voting day, you can put them together. You know whether you are winning or you are not winning. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why at the polling station, we ensure all candidates make sure your agents are there. Mm -hmm. And for the MPP and the NDC, because they are contesting all the parliamentary elections and they are contesting the presidential election, at each polling station, we are going to have at least two agents of the MPP, two agents of the NDC, at each of the polling stations. So if your agents work very well, they need to ensure that all the processes are very clear. Mm -hmm. Now, if even your agents are not there, the EC officials there, the presiding officer, and the others who are there, they have been trained to ensure that they, they protect the integrity of the process. Is there any way they can be compromised? Because there are people who believe that some of these uh, agents can be compromised. The by agents one of the parties? Stop. Yes. No, not agents of the parties. The agents EC. of the EC. You know, the presiding officers and the other officers who work there. They can be compromised by one of the parties to, you know, twist their hands in one way or another, allow for there to be stuffing of ballots, or allow, you know, people to go in there and go and vote. Can what is the nature of the training in order to prevent that kind of thing? I think Ghana, Ghana has, has gone far beyond that. The training we give them is such that you make any mistake which is criminal in nature, mm -hmm. we'll take legal action against you. We'll make sure we'll hand you over to the police and the necessary prosecution will take place. Beyond that, at the polling station, we have 13 presidential candidates. Yeah. We believe that a chunk of them are going to have their agents at all these polling stations. Beyond that, observers are allowed. Observers are allowed at the polling station to go and observe the process. And citizens, after they have voted, they can stand somewhere and observe the process. And you, the official of the EC, you dare make any mistake against the law, we, as I said, we are going to deal with you. And we also expect that the parties are going to train their agents in such a way that they will also observe and monitor the process. So it's the reason why when you get to the police station, the agents sit at vantage point to see the process so that if the presiding officer or any of the EC officers are doing anything untoward, they call them to order. And don't forget that at each police station, there are security personnel also over there to ensure the integrity of the process. Mm. So as far as we are concerned, our officers and in 2020, we didn't have any problem like that. And we didn't also hear of the parties complaining that their agents were compromised. We think that if you have been selected by your party to be an agent at a political, at a polling station, mm. make sure you do your job well, very in the, well. In the 2020 elections, uh, there were a few allegations, you know, here and there of, you know, presiding officers declaring elections at places where they were not supposed to declare the elections. You know, among other things, all, some, some of these I don't, I don't, you know, issues we, came we up. To, that, that is why, that's why people sometimes say that, okay, it's possible that we can compromise some of the issues. Oh, no, no, it's, it's not true. It's not true because the processes are such that the parties, observers, everyone is deeply involved. Mm. And during the counting, all the agents are around, uh, the citizens are also mm -hmm. around. So, if th these things cannot happen now, I doubt how with the processes we have deployed. Because returning officers, the returning officers are also there. Yeah. Others, the district officers are all there to ensure the integrity of the process. And even at the coalition centers, we have the parties have their agents for presidential, for parliamentary. So I think that the, the, the embedded features of efficiency, effectiveness are so much that mm. anyone who wants to do something to undermine the process cannot succeed. So what are the agents supposed to do at the end of it all? You know, after the ballots have been counted, the famous pink sheets, you know, need to be signed and all of that. 
what are the agents supposed to do? Uh, you know, the pres bef point? before the poll will start, the presiding officer is supposed to fill certain things yes. in the presence of all the agents. Yes. And when we finish to, they do that, the agents are supposed to sign off on the results. Well, the counting is done in the full glare of the public and even the media who are the observers and even citizens who, who will be at the uh, polling station to observe. So as agent, your job is to ensure that what is declared rejected is actually rejected. If there are problems, you are, you are allowed to raise it in the presence of all the other agents. So your job is to ensure the integrity of the process. And, and the commission has trained its officials to embrace that. You, the agents are there to ensure that you do things right. And you, the one you, we have recruited as a presiding officer, your job is to do everything right. And don't forget that we have this verification device. Yes. And that device ensures that we know the total number of people who have voted. So if even you staff the ballots, mm -hmm. the ballot box, and the machine says that oh, only 200 people have voted, then there is a problem there. Mm -hmm. So it's not possible. How many people do manual verification? Oh, manual, in 2020, out of the almost 13.5 million people who voted, mm -hmm. we had manual verification of almost about 11,000. So in, in, in all, over 99.9% .9 went through electronic verification. Right. And even to go through the manual verification, your name must be in the voter's register. Your picture must be there. All those around must indeed confirm that you are the one mm -hmm. there right. before you go through the manual. So the manual is not... But well, when you go, we use first, it must be your fingerprints. Yes. Then your face. If those things don't work, that's when we go to the manual. And it's very, very important. So if anyone has any intention, the commission has recruited you to work as a presiding officer, and you no, it's a lie. If you are not very careful, uh, you may end up facing criminal prosecution. All right. Uh, we, we have to wrap up, unfortunately. We've run out of time. But, uh, I mean, by way of education to the voter who is watching today as we go into the polls, you've got barely, what, 19 days? Well, 19 days. Yeah, less to than election 2024. What, what would be the message from Dr. Yeah. Bosman Asari of the EC? To the, voter. The, the message is that we've re we registered over almost 18.7 million, a little over 18.7 million. And in 2020, we had a voter turnout of 79%, a little over 79%. This year, we are working hard to even do more than that. So the Electoral Commission would like to encourage all Ghanaians who are registered voters that come December 7th, they should all go to their constituencies and to their specific polling stations and go and exercise the franchise. And when they go there, they are going to vote. When they are issued with the ballot papers, they must make sure at the back of the ballot paper, the easy stamp is there. It's very, very important. Because if the stamp is not there, it will not count. So once you go to the polling station, you are giving first the presidential ballot, check the back and be, be sure that the easy stamp is there. The same applies to the parliamentary. And I also want to say that in conclusion that Election is about a contest of ideas. The party, the candidates you like, just go out there and vote for them. I encourage people to go out there and exercise the franchise. It's not about fighting. It's not about conflict. Let's go and do it. At the end of the day, the, one, the people, Ghanaian, Ghanaians want them to become members of parliament. They will go out there and serve. Those Ghanaians want, the person Ghanaians want him or her to become the president, those people will also go ahead and serve. So let's do it in a manner, in a very civil way, in a very peaceful way. And once we do that, Ghana will chalk another success as a beacon of democracy. Very well, Dr. Bosman Asari. I wish we had more time, unfortunately. No, we we'll, don't. we'll make another time. Yes, in definitely. Future. We would love to have you in the studio again. Thank you very much. My pleasure. For joining us here uh, on Hard Talk on GH1 Television. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, that has been our conversation uh, with Dr. Bosman Asari. Uh, one of the commissioners of the Electoral Commission. Uh, it's been uh, an engaging uh, conversation. And um, do stay tuned. When we return, uh, we've got more uh, to come up here on GH Today. We'll, we'll be right back.